Hi there, I'm Tyson Mitsuki. I'm a co-host for Get A Life Podcast Kunai, an anime review podcast in which we tackle shows new and old and give our opinions of it with some little bit of entertainment thrown in. The winter season of anime has started. I've been watching some shows and today I want to present you with my first impressions on some of them. The show, which I will call Impressions, in the winter run will be five shows and I'm including the first two in this video. Dagashi Kashi and Haruchika. Without further ado, let's get started. Dagashi Kashi, Cheap Sweets Candy. This anime is based off a manga published by Kotoyama in 2014, Kotoyama probably being a pen name for this author. It is classified as a comedy slice of life anime with some bits of romance drawn in it, done by Studio Feel and directed by Shigehito Takayanagi. The premise is as follows, Kokonatsu Chikara is the son of a sweet shop owner in rural Japan. His father wants him to inherit the Shikara Dagashi, but Kokonatsu wants to be a manga artist. One day in summer, the mysterious Hotaru Shidare, daughter of the owner of a world-class sweets manufacturer, comes to town to offer Kokonatsu's father a position at their plant. He agrees on one condition, she must get Kokonatsu to continue running the Shikara Dagashi. So this being a first impressions video, let's cover the cons first before getting into the pros. First one, the Tokyo Broadcasting System holding the show back for release. Now, I understand that this was largely remedied with the release of Dagashi Kashi Episode 2, but at the time this was written, the show released on Japan on a Friday and it released legally on a Monday. And I've been researching around a bit and this isn't Funimation's fault that the episode came out so late. And this is not the first time that Funimation has dealt with these kind of situations either. And we have to wonder, what is up with the licensors? Would you rather limit your own potential audience, the one that you can get data from, just to get them to the pirate sites? A second con I observe, the slow pace. Now, people familiar with the manga will be aware that the first episode got through like six or seven chapters. Those were the numbers that I've been seeing around in discussion threads. However, as an anime watcher, not familiar with the source material, it did feel kind of slow, even though the manga crowd can argue that it blasted through all the episodes. This is probably part of the format that Dagashikashi decided to go for, but it felt slow compared to other shows within the same genre. The third con that I'm observing, and this may be a bit weird, but I'm gonna throw it out there nonetheless, the product placement. Now, this is a show that's designed to either sell me candy or showcase the candy that is used in rural Japan. Either way, it's not a candy that most people can purchase themselves to try. So if the objective is to sell candy, at least this type of intention outside of Japan it's really worthless. The fourth and final con, I really had to point this out because it bothers me. The weird art design. Some of the characters have a really jarring design that I can't still wrap my head around it. For instance, Hotaru seems to have Nagato's Rinnegan. Saya appears to have Hashiman eyes from Oregairu. And Kokonatsu has really wide eyes. I still don't really know how to feel about it and it kind of... This snacks at me, I suppose. With the cons out of the way, let's go on to the pros. I feel that this show, for what it's trying to do, has very good comedy paces. Mostly because the setting. We're talking about rural Japan, it is largely very quiet, very boring, and then you throw this character in the form of Hotaru that just shakes this little town to its foundation. It's like, she's the city girl, trying to make sense of all of this rural boredness. There were some good moments in that first episode. Here's one of them. で。えっと、じゃあ、チーズと
I'm so cool. It may not be gut-wrenching comedy, but it is admirable nonetheless. Second pro, Torbo fan service. At least from the shows that I'm watching, this seems to be the show that has the most horrible fan service. Even though you could make the argument that Hotaru has two big attributes, when I compare it to Myriad Colors, this fan service in this show is rather tame, and I'm not gonna make excuse for the bad scene. That was quite unnecessary, merely done to titillate the persons who are into that kind of fan service, but regardless, as an overall, I feel the fan service on this show is horrible. Third pro that I observed, I feel that Saya is a good Sundera character. While it still falls in line with most of the tropes of what is a Sundera character, it's actually refreshing to see Saya not hating Kokonotsu whenever she feels embarrassed. And they could do something really good with this later down the road. And the fourth and final pro, it has the potential to get me invested in the story. From what I'm seeing, Hotaru and Saya seems to have a thing for Kokonotsu. So eventually this will have a little romance element going on for it. And I as a viewer find myself in the position that I don't know for which girl to root for. Shall I root for the person who's been the childhood friend? Or should I root for the outsider? It's really interesting to see how this will develop further episodes ahead. So that's the Gashikashi. Let's move on to something else, shall we? Haruta to Chika Waseishun Suru. Haru Chika. Haruta and Chika Blossom, or Haru Chika for short, is based off a novel first published in 2008 by author Sei Hatsuno. It is classified as a mystery anime done by Studio Progressive Animation Works and directed by Masakatsu Hashimoto. The premise is that Haruta and Chika two childhood friends, are members of a high school wind instrument club that is on the verge of being shut down. They spend their days practicing hard while also trying to recruit new members. When a certain incident happens within their school, they work together to solve it. As per usual, let's tackle the cons first before going into the pros. And my first con is actually jarring for a show that has such emphasis on music. The inconsistent musical score. How can you possibly explain that a show has such masterpieces as these? And then we get musical arrangements like this. Chika-chan-no-itara-yo-nin-da-yo。え?そう、これで全員?そう、俺は部長の片桐、トランペット、2年生だ。同じく2年の朝日な返さえ。J、A、F、G、A、H、死のフラットはBね。覚えました。じ
It's like he's this little Mr. Perfect that determines that everything that happens around is a riddle and he knows all the solution, but rather than telling everyone what the solution is, he just walks everybody through the riddle and solves it for both the brass club members and the audience that is paying attention to the show. But he comes across as a know-it-all. It wasn't probably the intention of the author to do this, but the fact that it comes across as this makes me think that the mystery themes of Haruchika are merely pseudo-intelligent. And like Haruta said in the episode himself, it makes no sense. So those are the cons. Let's go over to the pros. First pro, and this is a big one. Finally, we get a queer main character in the form of Haruta. It didn't go unnoticed that Haruta has something for the teacher that leaves the brass club. However, it isn't being showcased as much during the show, so it is rather tame and has the potential to devolve into something even bigger in regards to the future of queer main characters on the future of anime. I'm really excited to see what this show will do with this. So far, it's hitting all the right notes. This has the potential to make more queer people interested in anime. I just hope that PA Works doesn't mess it up. Second pro, there's some interesting imagery going on. When I first noticed the title card identifying the episode, I instantly fell in love with it. I love geometric stuff, so naturally I was drawn towards this. Also, later down in the episode, there are some references to House of Cards, I presume? While Chica writes an email, the text of the email pops up in the hut that the viewer can see. And this is really interesting. It was something that I really enjoy of House of Cards, and I'm really glad to see more art forms emulate this. As minor as a detail as that is, it's still a welcome addition to my eyes. Third pro, the character design. Especially the person who designs all of Chica's shirts. Like in every single occasion, there are different designs for Chica's shirts. And it's actually really refreshing to see. Seriously, the one who did Chica's design should get a prize. We're done with Haru Chica. And thus the first part of the Winter 2016 anime first impressions comes to an end. I do hope you'll join me for the next one. Until then, thanks for listening, and with nothing more to say, signing out. Goodbye.